hope to many around the globe, transforming lives into legacies. Live in Word with Pastor Mensah Otobiel. And now, today's word. Now, if you know the story of Jephthah, he became a bad boy. And then his people got into trouble. And they called him to come and lead them. This is the man they rejected. The stone that the builders rejected has now become the head of the corner. But his sense of rejection never stopped. He was still running. He was trying to achieve something with his life. But he always felt he didn't belong. So when they were going into battle, he made a rush. Unexpected, undemanded promise to God. God, if you give me victory, I will sacrifice anything that pops out of my house to you. And when he went to victory, the first thing that pops out of his house to come and celebrate him is his daughter. He had to sacrifice his daughter, his family, for his achievement because he felt rejected. The sad thing with people who are running from rejection is they end up hurting a lot of people and destroying a lot of people and destroying even the people they love because they never feel accepted. But it keeps them running. It keeps them running. Jephthah was a runner. And he was running away from rejection. I don't know whether that is your story. It doesn't mean you may not become great as a matter of fact. Some of the people who achieve the greatest in life are the most insecure people. Because very secure people don't move. They are happy. They never do anything. That's why when you look at most families, the first generation that came out of hardship become successful. Their children who enjoy the success are not able to replicate the success because there is nothing running after them. They have nothing that makes them wake up to start running. They always feel life will be good. Everybody needs something to run after them. But you have to be careful where it will chase you to. Which is what I'm going to talk about uh, next week. Hagar was running from consequences. It made her active. It made her want to achieve something. Jephthah is running from rejection. It made him want to do something with his life. But the rejection was the driving force of his life. For people like Jephthah, in any effort they make, they take unnecessary risks. They put everything on the line just to succeed. The Jephthahs of this life end up succeeding, but in the process... They also destroy people dear to them, like Jephthah destroyed his daughter. My question to you, what is running after you? When you get up in the morning and you go to work or you're busy or you, you go into business, what is the thing that is pushing you to do that? Is it because you are running from the consequences of your past or you're running from rejection? Third runner, the third runner, quite a number of runners in the Bible. Third runner, David. David was not running from consequences. He was running from evil conspiracies. He felt the weight of a whole political system coming against him and it made him run. Anytime David got up, he had to run, and he was running from an evil trap that has been set for him. People who wanted to get him. First Samuel chapter 19, verse 18 and 19. And we read these words. So David fled and escaped and went to, Ram, to Samuel at Ramah and told him all that Saul had done to him. He and Samuel went and stayed in Naoth. Now it was told Saul, saying, Take note, David is at Naoth in Ramah. David was thrust into leadership at a very young age. Very talented young man. Talented musician. 
talented fighter, warrior, a very passionate man, very sensitive man. He had all the goods together. One moment he was a shepherd and the next moment he was in the king's palace married to the king's daughter. It looked like all of a sudden he had broken through. But when you rise that quickly in life and you are that talented, you're going to have people wanting to destroy you very early. So very early in his life, as innocent as he was, he realized that he had become the target of the king and palace conspiracies. And he had to run from the king who is intent on taking his life. And there are runners like that. Many of us are running because we feel somebody is out to get us. You are talented, you are gifted, and somebody is determined to kill you before your time. And I'm not talking about witchcraft killing, which is the one you don't even have to be afraid of. It is feely, feely killing when somebody really wants to do you in. Somebody wants to destroy you. Somebody is fighting against you. Somebody is running after you because you are gifted, you are talented, you have risen very high, and they want to stop you from rising. And they set their eyes on you to destroy you. And that is what caused David to run. And if you read the passage, he ran to Samuel. And the moment he ran to Samuel, information went to the king. Because when he, the king is running after you, he has everything at his disposal. He has FBI. He has CIA, if he's American. He has KGB, if he's Russian. He has people everywhere who will spy on you, report on you, show them where you are, and they will try to get you. So David had nowhere to hide. He was running from one cave to the other, from one hiding place to the other. Every day of his life was a movement. But it kept him going. Eventually, that running made him run to God. And eventually, he ran to his destiny. So, you may be Hagar, who is running because of the consequences of your past. You may be Jephthah, who is running because you've been rejected in life. You may be David, who is running because there are people out there to get you. I don't know what it is, but whenever you get up in the morning, something is motivating you to run. You don't want Sarah to get you. You don't want your fa father's children to rejoice over you. And you don't want King Saul to destroy you. So I ask you today, what is running after you? What are you running from? If you tell me, Pastor, there is nothing running after me. I'm just living my cool life. Then I'm telling you, you're going nowhere. If you don't feel any sense of urgency... To depart from something, to move from something, to run from something. You may be talented, you may be gifted, but you make very little progress. It's not enough to have vision and be driven by vision. You must also be driven by some insecurity. Something that doesn't make you rest. Because you know if I rest, it will eat me up. For some people is running away from the poverty of their family. Running away from the bad influence of your parents. And you are determined I'm going to be different. You are a runner. Somebody say I'm a runner. The fourth and final runner. Fourth and final runner. Is a man called Jonah. Jonah was running from responsibility. He, he felt called to do something he didn't want to do. So he was running. Jonah chapter 1, verse 10 and 11. Then the men were exceedingly afraid and said to him, Why have you done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. Then they said to him, What shall we do to you that the sea may become for us? For the sea was growing more tempestuous. Sadly, Jonah was running from the right thing. He was running from his true mission in life. He didn't like the assignment 
God had given to him. So he wanted to run away from it. He wanted to do something else. And there are people that God has called and given a mission to. And they know what their life is about. But they just want to be something else. So they get up in the morning and they're trying to be somebody else. They're trying to do something else. Some are running from the responsibility of fatherhood. Unfortunately, there are people who give birth to children and run from their children. Mothers who are running from their children. Responsibility is too hard for them. Others are running from a calling from God. The hand of God is upon them. God has called them. God wants to use them. But they're running. And if you are running from the calling of God like Jonah, you can run but you can hide. Yes, you can run from Saul because he's king only over Israel. You can go to Philistine land and go to other land. But where do you go to when you are running from the ruler of the universe? If you go to any island, he's there. If you flee the earth and go to live on the moon, he will find you. If you go to live on Mars, he will find you. If you go to live on Betelgeuse, he will find you. Wherever you go, he will find you. If you leave this galaxy and go to another galaxy, from Milky Way galaxy to Andromeda, he will find you. If you go to the ends of the universe, he will find you. Because the span of eternity is before his gaze. You cannot run from the presence of God. But there are people running. And for some people, it's not just a calling from God. It's it's something they know they must do. The weight of responsibility is on them. And they're running. And they don't want to be that. They don't want to take up that responsibility. Some are firstborns in their family. And there is a weight of responsibility as a firstborn. And they feel it's too much, too much pressure, too much pressure. So they're running in the opposite direction. And that's what they get up in the morning and run after. That's a lion running after them. If you are a Hagar, the lion you are running away from is the consequences of the actions of the past. If you are a Jephthah, the lion you're running away from is the rejection you feel all around you. If you are David, the lion you're running away from is the conspiracy of powerful people who are determined to destroy you. If you are Jonah, the lion you're running away from is your true mission and assignment in life, which you think is too big for you. So the question I want to ask you today is what is running after you and what are you running away from? Everybody is running. Look behind you. What makes you get up in the morning to go hustle? What makes you get up in the morning to want to go and do something great? What makes you get up in the morning to achieve something? What do you, what makes you wake up to get results? It's important for each one of us to know what we are running from. I know what I'm running from. You say, Pastor, tell me, I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you, but whatever is running after you can be the greatest motivation for your progress in life. I've told the story many times. When I was young, in our neighborhood, there was a man who had a mango tree. And uh, he had quite a number of mango trees. And normally, you know, he lived alone. And uh, he had these mango trees and the mangoes would be ripe. And that is the biggest temptation for us kids at that time was ripe mangoes. And this man had a hedge around his house and a gate. And uh, we tried to find a way through the hedge to go to his house and, and, and deliver him from his mangoes. And uh, one day we, we were there trying to do our job pick pick mangoes some in the tree some downstairs and yelling at each other then we heard the back of a dog we never saw the dog we just heard the back and then we started running I guess the dog was running after us and when we started running people were calling their mama people were calling whatever they were calling some went through the gate some went through the hedge 
And I was one of the last to go. I, I was on top of the trees. So I was the last one to go. And when I got to, to the hedge, for some reason I cannot fathom up to now, I jumped the hedge. I wasn't a high jumper, haven't jumped anything that high before. But that day, what pursued me helped me to jump. So whatever is pursuing you will help you to jump. But you don't jump into danger. You have to jump to safety. You don't run into the wilderness. You have to run to the pools of water. You don't run into the, your enemy. You have to run to the Lord like David. You have to run. You have to run. You have to run. But you have to run in the right direction. And I pray God that whatever pursue you will never catch up with you. It will not destroy you. It will not eat you up. You will not become a victim of life. You will become a victor of life. You're going to jump. You're going to rise. You're going to fly. You're going to make progress in your life. So when you look at what is running after you, the only thing it must tell you is, I have a motivation to run. The only thing that you know will catch up with you is if you are a Jonah, God will catch up with you. Thank God he will catch up with you. And when he catches up with you, he will redirect your energy and take you on another mission. But if you are David, Saul will not catch up with you because you will keep going. If you are Hagar, your past will not destroy you. If you are Jephthah, no matter who hates you and doesn't believe in you, you will still achieve what God has said before you because they run after you not to eat you up but to inspire you, to motivate you, so you can rise up to soar to new heights and do things that you never thought you could do. What is running after you? Thank you for listening to Living Word. To interact with Pastor Mensah Otebil, like his page on Facebook. Follow him on Twitter at Mensah Otebil. Email otebil at centralgospel.com or call plus 233-302-688-000.